Today's video is made possible by Brilliant.org. Today I've got this nice and somewhat surprising problem from my favorite calculus book. It's Calculus by Spivak. And you can find a link to it in my Amazon store down below if you're interested. Okay, so let's see what we're going for here. We'd like to find the surface area of the portion of a sphere that lies between parallel planes that are H units apart. So here's a picture that I've got. I've got this sphere, and then notice I've got two parallel planes here, and I've placed them H units apart. And then what I have shaded there is the portion of the sphere that we're trying to find the surface area of. And maybe the interesting thing about this problem is that this surface area does not depend on the placement of the planes. So if we put two planes apart way up here, we get a shape which is like almost a cap. But if we put the same two planes with the same distance down here, it looks closer to a cylinder. And that surface area will be the same even though those shapes are totally different. So I find that interesting. And maybe as a follow-up question, um, could you determine if the volumes are the same? I think they're not. Or are the maybe arc lengths the same between two points? Maybe that's also kind of an interesting question. Although that would maybe need to be formulated a little bit more carefully. Okay, so what's our major tool here? Well, it's gonna be solids of revolution and finding the surface area of a solid created by rotating a curve y equals f of x, where x comes between a and b about the x-axis. So here's a sketch up of what's going on here. I have my curve y equals f of x between a and b, and then I wanna split this region from a to b into n subintervals. And then we're gonna focus on the ith subinterval between xi minus one and xi, and let's zoom in. Notice that gives you the following picture. And the idea here is we approximate the curve by a straight line on that subinterval, and thus on all of these subintervals. And then if we do the rotation there, it's a little bit easier to work with. So this straight line will rotate to this like kind of maybe a cone with the top cut off, that sort of shape. And notice this cone with the top cut off has some important measurements. First of all, this radius up here is f of x sub i. This radius down here is f of x i minus one. And then using the mean value theorem, we can actually find the hypotenuse portion of this cone to be the square root of delta x squared plus this derivative squared times delta x squared, where delta x is the distance between these two pieces of the subinterval. So I'm leaving lots of details out here, but that's because we want to keep this maybe focused on our main problem. And then if we add up all of these different surface areas created from this picture, we end up with the following integral. Of course, that's also after taking a limit as n goes to infinity. So we have the surface area is two pi, the integral from a to b of f of x times the square root of one plus f prime squared. Okay, so let's keep that in mind as we dive into our problem. Hey there, before we continue, I'd like to tell everyone about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. While watching my videos is always appreciated, you get more out of learning by doing, and that's why I highly recommend you sharpen your skills with Brilliant. Brilliant's enormous library of learning content allows active learners like you to explore a variety of topics and skill levels, and Brilliant will support you at every step of the way. You'll be be able to master whole topics gradually in as little as 15 minutes a day and learn anywhere, anytime on your phone, tablet, or computer. Brilliant makes learning more like a game with fun features that let you challenge yourself and compete with others. I recently used their resources to augment my Calculus 2 course, and I use it with my son who is in pre-algebra. See what I mean? No matter what skill level you're at, Brilliant can help you improve. But we're scientists here, so don't take my word for it. You should test it for yourself. Treat yourself to a unique hands-on experience by going to brilliant.org slash Michael Penn and the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual subscription. Thanks once again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. 
Okay, so now we're gonna look at our problem. So I'd first like to see how I could model the sphere as a solid of revolution. And I can do that by taking the top half of a circle. Let's say the circle is radius r, so that means it intersects the x-axis at minus r and r, and the y-axis at r as well. I guess we're assuming that it's centered at the origin, which we might as well do. Okay, so like I said, we've got this circle right here. And I think it's pretty clear that if we rotate this circle, we will indeed get a sphere with radius r. So rotated, like I said, about this x-axis. Okay, but then how do we cut this with two parallel planes? Well, here I put these parallel planes running horizontally, but I could also put them running vertically, and maybe that's a better picture for our setup. I'll pick some sort of random spot between minus r and r, and I'll put a vertical line, and that will like be related to my plane. And I want planes to be separated by h units, so I'll go h units to the right, and I'll put another plane a plus h. And I guess the important thing here is that these numbers a and a plus h are between minus r and r, but I think that's like kind of okay. And now let's really look at what's going on. Now if we rotate this portion, which I am shading in blue, we'll see that we would get exactly what we want. We would get a portion of a sphere between two parallel planes that are h units apart. It's just kind of lying on its side versus this picture. Okay. But now let's put this in terms of our volumes of solids of revolution. So this guy right here is built from the equation x squared plus y squared equals r. That's the equation of the entire circle, but the top half can be gained by solving for r and taking the positive square root. Sorry, that should have been r squared. So we've got y equals r squared minus x squared. So that means the surface area that we are interested in is the area of the solid created by rotating y equals square root of r squared minus x squared with x on the interval a to a plus h about the x-axis. So that puts it exactly in terms of what we had on the board before. Okay, but we've got a formula for that. Just if we were to replace what we had on the board before, the f of x is with y's, and that would give us something like this. We have two times pi times the integral from a to a plus h of y times the square root of one plus y prime squared dx. Okay, well, let's maybe above here, just so that it's off to the side a little bit, calculate y prime. So notice y could be written as r squared minus x squared to the half power. Maybe that would help us take the derivative more easily. So we'll have y prime is equal to one half r squared minus x squared to the negative half times negative two x using the chain rule. So that means in the end, the two and the two will cancel, one's in the numerator and one's in the denominator, and that leaves us with negative x over the square root of r squared minus x squared, keeping in mind that that negative half power is a square root in the denominator. But now squaring that will be easy just to write in. So let's see what we have. We have two pi, the integral from a to a plus h, We'll have y, but I'll rewrite that as the square root of r squared minus x squared, and then we'll have the square root of this. And let's do the calculation. This is one plus this function squared, this minus x over the square root of that stuff squared. So squaring it will cancel out the minus sign, leaving us with x squared over r squared minus x squared. So something like that. But now let's maybe keep in mind that we should perhaps simplify what's going on in the radical before we get ahead of ourselves. And we can rewrite one as r squared minus x squared over r squared minus x squared 
for this simplification. So let's see what that'll leave us with. We'll have two times pi, the integral from a to a plus h, and then we have this square root of r squared minus x squared. That's sort of like just coming along for the ride at the moment. And then we have the square root of, so replacing this one with the version that we have right here, we see that the x squareds will cancel and we'll be left with r squared over r squared minus x squared. But now check it out. We have a square root of r squared minus x squared in the numerator and in the denominator. So that means these will cancel. Forgot my dx term. And then we're taking the square root of r squared, so that's simply r, but r is a constant with respect to the integral, so we can take it out, leaving us with two pi times r, and then the integral from a to a plus h of dx. But that's just gonna deposit us the length of the interval, but the length of the interval is h. So that gives us our final answer, two pi r h. And then just as a quick like gut check to make sure this makes sense, can we get the surface area of the entire sphere using this formula? And we can. Notice that h equals 2r will give us the surface area of the sphere. That would be like maybe one plane right here at the minus r vertex. Well, it's not really a vertex, but the minus r point, And one plane right here. That gives us the entire sphere. But plugging that into here, we get surface area is 4 pi r squared, which is the well-known surface area of a sphere sphere. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.